Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we are working on a large York air handler. This is a four pipe system so you have heating and cooling via water and today we're going to be replacing a Bray actuator valve. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. Today we're going to be replacing this Bray actuator and valve. This is a three inch butterfly valve, specifically a resilient butterfly valve. This is the 31 series with our Series 70s actuator. So yesterday we were here and I replaced the chilled water one up top. It's a very difficult spot to work in and everything's good. Today we are back for our heating actuator, which is this one. Another tough space to be in, excuse me, tough space. But last time, if you saw the previous video, our shutoff valve for our supply doesn't hold. So we have two pipes. We have a supply and return. This one is our supply. This branches out. This is a bypass. And this is our return. This valve right now is closed, but, and this is our supply. And water keeps feeding, because when I try to drain it here, it doesn't stop. So I have a solution where I'm going to build something. This is a one inch ball valve. So I have a solution where I'm going to step this down to three quarter and to a fitting where I can connect the garden hose. So I'm going to run that into a floor drain. So even though the valve doesn't hold, the water is going to constantly flow down the hose and I'll be able to change the actuator even with the water running. We'll see. This is not my idea that I wanted to at first. I wanted to shut down the riser but the engineer wants to move this way. I told them that I can rig something up and this is my idea. So we're gonna have it draining and let that go. And this is the setup that I bought. Bought a one inch nipple to a one inch to three quarter reducer. And then I got this brass fitting that goes from the regular thread to the special garden hose thread. So let's go ahead and build that up. So Teflon. And that's gonna go on right here. And that's a beautiful thing. All right, so we got the hose set up and it's draining, but honestly, it's draining kind of hard. Pick it up for a sec so you can see the water. It's quite some pressure right there. So we got that draining now. Hopefully there's no water on the opposite end to be safe. I think there's a drain cock on the other end. Let me drain that and make sure that there's no water coming from there so that when I drop this valve, we're not gonna flood this place. Here's the supply. Way too much pressure in there. While I was here, what I noticed is that there's actually another valve right here. I hope this can close, man. It's a little bit of water now, but it's slowed down tremendously. Now, the return has quite some pressure. <laughs> this thing doesn't hold either. But it is what it is for that. So the return is definitely not holding. So what I think is happening was that this might have closed, but because the water is coming back on the return, the water was coming back this way and out. But since I closed that valve there, we shut that off. So now between here and there, we should be able to work. There is still a little bit of water coming out on this side, but we should be able to catch it with my setup. So let's go ahead and get started and hope we don't flood this place. Let's turn this off. Let's turn this off, this off. And this is the BMS if I just turn this breaker. That light should come off. All right, so everything is dead. Let's get started. Just so you can see, this is how we get in here. Not much space. Kind of like gotta like crawl in here. So you can see how hard it was to change this actuator, which we got. And now we're here for this one. So let's begin by taking out the electrical. I got a picture of the wiring, so now I can disconnect everything. Got the electrical free. 
And from here, what I want to do is take down these two couplings and then rebuild it in a comfortable place. It is going to be harder to put it up, but we'll figure it out. I do not have a socket set this size, so I will be using an adjustable wrench for now. But hopefully, by the time we put it back, I can buy that fitting and put this up easier. So I'm just going to take out these four nuts and bolts, take that out, and we should be able to drop this whole assembly. Do not like that pressure. Mess around with the valves a little bit, kind of slow down. Okay. That was it. Doesn't seem like too much pressure is there, so hopefully that's just the remaining water in the pipe and maybe a little bit coming through. Alright, so I pulled the coupling and I moved aside the gasket, and that's all the water we got. Just leave a bucket underneath and I think we'll be okay. Let's go ahead and take out that next coupling. Right there. Let's get this out. You got it. All right, take it. You got it, sir. All right. All right, so we got it out, but look at that. Oh, that valve is squirting out, not holding. Here's the old valve, and the idea is to transfer off all this piping onto our new valve. It's sitting the exact same way. So we're gonna take off these four nuts and bolts. And then the same for the opposite end. You can free it up, transfer it onto the new valve. Really gotta hurry this up, because that valve isn't holding. And the last thing I wanna do is flood this building. Loose. Loose. And I just keep going. All right, so I took out the four bolts. This should slide right off. And from here, we gotta take off these threads. These three are loose. And pretty much, I'm just gonna transfer it on to the new one. And you wanna spin this side and this side evenly so you have an even amount of thread. So let's go ahead and begin by transferring this all over. And there's a little gasket in here, so make sure you wipe everything clean so we have a good connection. Just taking out this thread, what I would do is put a rag and then grip it, but grip it from the middle so you don't destroy the thread. Hopefully this comes out easy. Oh, right there. It's coming right off. And we're just gonna transfer it. Wipe this clean. Slide this in. Make sure everything is nice and flush. Now we can tighten our nuts. So that's how it looks. This is only tightened by hand and we're simply gonna do the same thing for the opposite end. I'm just gonna put on all the nuts now and tighten everything down, make sure everything is flush. Here we have the new valve built. Everything's ready to go. We're just gonna make sure we clean all the surfaces, make sure it's nice, and clean and flat so we can have no seals, no leaks. And here are the gaskets, honestly, they look really bad. 
but we're gonna try to make deal with what we have might be replaced might not we'll see hopefully this holds here's the old gasket as you can see it's torn do not feel comfortable replacing that they don't sell the cup the gaskets alone so i picked up two new couplings they're really not that expensive so you're better off just changing that and being safe because the last thing i want to do is be up in there and have to take that valve down again so as far as these edges just want to make sure it's clean if anything maybe take like a little wire brush and just make sure it's nice and smooth clean out any dirt that you can you don't want that getting stuck in the new valve and we could begin by climbing in here and getting that started just wipe down around this area and this area so everything's nice and clean smooth got these couplings ready and i got this set up this has to go up the same exact way this is extremely heavy right now gonna start by taking the new gasket and mounting it onto the pipes and pushing it back all right so i got both couplings on so the idea is to bring the valve in and then we can slide this back and slide this back onto the valve put on our couplings and tighten it down it's all wet here let's do what we can thousand years later so you want the coupling in between these two lines one line and the next line and then from there put this thing on and this one on the bottom put the nut and bolt through and tighten it down You're good, Chris. Look at the space we're in. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> good job, man. You did it, sir. All right, guys, this nightmare is in. Wow. That was horrible. Pants are soaked, dirty. Oh, man. Let's close this. Let's start opening our valves and see if we have any leaks. Crack it open. All right, it's looking good right now. Open the return. All right, we're all open. All right, guys, it's looking good no leaks from here we gotta connect our three wires and do some testing and afterwards we're gonna insulate the rest of this piping to go up the top and i just have to make my three connections so let's run this in and wire this up all right ran that in and made our connections just put the cover on top so you can see the valve it says red that stands for closed. Let's go ahead and turn all the power back on. If you look on top, it says open now. And that one is closed. So we we're probably calling for heating. All right, so the fan started. This is the cooling actuator that's closed, but then this one just closed again. Let's go ahead and set it to heating. And from there, let's make sure this thing works. All right, so maybe when I turn on the power, the system resets. So now cooling actuator is closed. 
the heating actuator is open. Let's go ahead and check the temperature. Put a thermometer in the supply. All right, 85 degrees. So let some more water circulate. Might get hotter as well, but we're looking good. We have heating and cooling and everything is working off the BMS system. The engineer controls everything through his computer. All right, so we matched up this valve with all that other stuff. Everything's insulated and we're ready to roll. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. A new Bray actuator valve has been installed. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. And I'll catch you all next time. Thank <laughs> you.